Hello, welcome to Holistically Speaking. I'm Morella DeVoe, your host. Our mission with Holistically Speaking is to be the avenue through which the voices of holistic health reach you at the time you need it most. And that voice today, my guest, is Jen Baer from Green Mountain Composting. Welcome to the show, Jen. Thank, Thank you, you for joining me. My pleasure. You know, I was doing a little brainstorming a few weeks ago thinking like, oh, I want to do a different show. What else can we talk about that is related to health in a holistic way? And I thought about the Inner Veil. And actually, we're going to be doing a show uh, with someone from the Inner Veil. Um, and then I did a search because I knew there was composting done at the Inner Veil and I found Green Mountain Composting. And I was shocked by how big an operation you are. So I'm really excited to have you on the show and to learn and help our viewers learn all about uh, what compost is and how it's done and what it's about because I was, as I was sharing with you before the show, I have no idea. <laughs> I'm a city girl, I'm not a gardener, and so I'm really thrilled to have you and to learn from you today. Well, I'm glad to be here. I was a city girl too. <laughs> oh, good, so there's hope for me. Yeah. Okay, good. So um, just to kind of let the foundation, set the foundation, um, what, how can we define compost for me and for our viewers? What is compost? Um, so the word compost basically is, is, describes soil and that soil is basically organic material that has decomposed. Mm -hmm. So compost is, is, composting is the process of decomposing organic material into mm -hmm. soil, which is mm -hmm. a great resource for plants. Um, when you when you pick up a handful of compost basically what you're holding is material that was once alive mm -hmm. that has been um, has gone through the process of decomposition it's had um, microbial action mm -hmm. in there you know millions of microbes yeah. um, which are microscopic insects um, eating away mm -hmm. and breaking down that organic material to uh, the simplest form which is readily available for plants mm -hmm. and um, that's why it's so valuable in gardening, yeah. um, basically you're you're creating this material that is, is packed full of nutrients and has uh, nutrients that can be slow released for uptake by roots, and that's exactly what plants need. And so. so, how is that different than just like the basic, you know, handful of dirt that I might find in my garden? That's a good question. Um, so, you know, if I went into my backyard and I took mm -hmm. a shovel and I I dug up some dirt in my yard. Of course, we all have different levels and degrees of dirt in our yards, right. but um, what you're, you're likely going to find is a mix mm -hmm. of different types of particles. You're going to probably have some organic material in there. You'll have some sand. You may have some clay. There'll mm. be stones. Um, and depending on what that mixture is, it may or may not be ideal for mm -hmm. growing. Usually, it's not ideal. Yeah. Sometimes you get lucky, and it is if you're near a river or something. Yeah. Um, or if but, you live in California, or right you, here, <laughs> right? <laughs> the Garden of Eden. Yeah. Um, but most of the time, especially when you know most of us live in places that were graded and constructed at some mm -hmm. point and filled with usually low quality soil, uh, okay. which we call fill, um, and that doesn't generally have a lot of organic material in it. So when people go to garden, they find, wow, my, my plants aren't doing well. And so yeah. what you really need is to add some organic material to that. So. Tell us a little bit about what's the, what you would call organic material, because I think yeah. you know leaves, worms. I don't. What is yeah. organic material? Okay, when I, and I want to differentiate organic, not being like certified organic. I mean organic as in something that was once alive. Mm -hmm. So okay. um, compost can be made of all kinds of things. Um, at our facility at Green Mountain Compost, we we make it out of people's food scraps. Okay. that come to us. Um, we make it out of leaf and yard debris, so leaves, clippings from gardens, grass. Mm -hmm. okay. um, we also include um, manure in some of our mixes, so mm -hmm. we might take horse manure or cow manure, sometimes chicken manure. Mm -hmm. um, we also include um, food scraps from, from pre-consumer gotcha. um, food waste places like um, factories that are making different types of food that they have yes. you know, excess and we take that stuff. So um, that's what we do. Um, we also include wood chips. Okay. Um, but huh. for people who are doing it in their backyard, they might just have food scraps and maybe some sawdust or dried leaves. Um, and right. that stuff 
all composts That's because it was so all great. yeah it was all alive at one I point. I would have never yeah. thought wood chips and sawdust as part of compost, so, but of course yeah. I know nothing. About now wood compost. chips aren't something that you might that you want to put in your your backyard compost because mm -hmm. they're going to take a really long time to break yeah, down. Yeah, of course. We use them for a specific reason at our facility, mm -hmm. but um, generally when people are composting in their backyards, they're just putting in food scraps, dried leaves. Um, you have what we call the the browns and the greens. So okay. you have the dry. Um, the, the, the dried leaves or sawdust, stuff like mm -hmm. that, which is rich in carbon. And then you have the green stuff, which is the stinky stuff, the yeah. wet stuff, and that's really rich in nitrogen. Oh. And it's those two things together that really make composting happen, um, that the microbes really like. So a lot of people do this without even knowing it. Right. But um, generally, if you took a pile of, you know, if you just had a pile of leaves and you threw some food scraps over it and you mixed it up, um, as long as, you know, animals don't come and eat it, yeah you wait months and you're going to have, it's going to decompose it's and you'll have soil. Into, yeah. yeah. Um, so really that's, that's what compost is and I think it gets a bad reputation sometimes. People think the word compost insinuates something really stinky and that smelly. That it's going to be smelly. Yeah, and gross. And really it's just the stuff that goes into the compost that can be stinky and smelly. But once the composting, the process of composting happens and those microbes have the chance to go and do their Work job, yeah. And you get you get a mature product, which is soil. And if you pick mm -hmm. up a handful of compost, it smells great. Right. It smells like soil. Right. Um, and it shouldn't have an odor at all. So that's that's wonderful. And it's funny because you're saying microbes, and I'm I'm wanting to turn this into like a little biology <laughs> class yeah. or something. So where are these microbes coming from? And also in our um, you know hygiene hysterical world, yeah. <laughs> microbe is almost like a bad word. Yeah. So where are they coming from, and are they okay? Um, they're coming from everything. Mm -hmm. We have them on our hands right now. We're talking about bacteria. Yeah. Usually, I mean, the majority of, of what we call um, microbes is, mm -hmm. is really made up of bacteria, and those aren't all bad bacteria. Yeah. Um, most of them are not. Right. And yeah. so they're they're in everything already. So mm -hmm. they're in food scraps, they're in leaves. And so when you put all that stuff together and you give the right conditions, which are, you know, a good mix of carbon and nitrogen, right. um, you provide enough oxygen so that the microbes actually can um, can get going. Because if right. you create anaerobic conditions, then everything just sort of stops yeah. and the composting slop, stops uh, slows down. Yeah. Um, and also the right amount of moisture if it's too wet it won't compost. If it's too dry, it won't oh, compost. Interesting. So you want to achieve this, um, it's usually about 50 to 60 percent moisture um, rate. And so when those things happen, the the microbes that are there, the bacteria that's there, that just normally starts present. reproducing and starts really eating it up, partying. Yeah, <laughs> and then okay. you have a, a much larger population and those just keep yeah. eating and eating that material. So they're really just eating whatever's there yeah. and excreting it and breaking those particles down more and more and more and more. Mm -hmm. And by breaking those particles down, what you end up is with is nutrients that are red right. readily available because the, the particles are so yeah. small. Um, yeah, so that's how it works. <laughs> fascinating. I, you know, I could keep asking you yeah. all of these kind of uh, biology questions. but. Yeah. Um, there are also some great benefits and you know how to's almost that I want to share. I, I want to ask you to share with our, sure. our with our viewers. But I know that there's a good story behind how Green Mountain compost, compost came, came into being, yeah. um, and so I'd love to hear a little bit of that story. Sure. Um, well, Green Mountain compost was originally Intervale compost, mm -hmm. and that um, was started. Gosh, about 25 years ago, mm -hmm. or maybe more at this point, um, in Burlington's Intervale by a group of farmers who were just sort of putting together a bunch of piles a of big pile. Yeah. Yeah. pile. yeah, and the compost became really good. And long story short, the um, the Intervale Center, which mm -hmm. still operates in the Intervale, um, was running Intervale compost, mm -hmm. and um, it started growing, and we started selling. Um, not just bulk products, but products in bags as mm -hmm. well. And that distribution um, became large enough that it was, you know, spreading throughout New England. Yeah. Um, and then, about ooh, I don't know, about five years ago or so, um, the Chittenden Waste District decided to um, purchase Intervale Compost, mm -hmm. um, partially because Intervale Compost had to move out of the Intervale. We were. We, were, we needed to move for a number yeah. of reasons. 
Um, and so CSWD thought it was a great fit for their recycling program to sort of close that loop. Yeah. And so they constructed a brand new facility on Redmond Road in Williston. Yeah. And that opened um, three years ago. And we moved our whole wow. operation to Williston and changed our name to Green Mountain Compost since wow. we were no longer in the interview. So solid <laughs> waste and composting going hand in hand. So mm -hmm. they do pickups and they bring composting to you? Is that how it works? Or do you do your, the, your own the, pickup? The, um, we don't do any of the pickup. Um, so Green Mountain Compost is operating as a program of the mm -hmm. Chittenden Solid Waste District. Okay. But we don't have any, um, we don't haul anything except stuff from the drop-off centers that we have right. all over Chittenden County. So the hauling is mostly done by independent haulers. Gotcha. So for example, if a grocery store wants to compost their, their food waste, they use their hauler and oh, there's a special wow. truck that will pick that up and bring it to us. That's amazing. Yeah. That's so yeah. great. And that's growing yeah, more and more. That's yeah, that's phenomenal. So I'd love to hear about what are some of the benefits that you see in the growing practice of composting. I'd love to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I, I think, um, especially from a health perspective, um, you know, there are a lot of people right now who are disenchanted with the food that you can buy in grocery stores. Mm -hmm. um, we've got, you know, genetically modified um, stuff. We've got pesticides, herbicides, and it's, I think, difficult sometimes to make, be able to make good decisions about buying food without mm -hmm. spending a fortune. And so I think more and more people are starting to grow their own food. Right. And with that, um, you know, you need to have good soil. And so right. um, compost is, you know, incredible in terms of enhancing soil and, and mm -hmm. it basically gives plants what they need. Soil quality. Yeah. So just in terms of, of what it does specifically, um, it compost um, creates properties in soil that are ideal for plants. So it changes the structure of the soil, makes it more crumbly, mm -hmm. um, allows soil to retain moisture better, mm -hmm. um, prevents erosion. Um, it, as I mentioned, it has those, those available nutrients that are slow released over time as opposed to just zapping something with like a, a chemical fertilizer. Right. The, with compost in your soil, those nutrients are, are there when the plants need them. Um, I'm probably forgetting some things, but basically it's, um, it's organic material that, that yeah you know, simultaneously fertilizes and creates soil properties that are ideal for plants. And you also mentioned something about soil erosion, helping yeah. to prevent soil erosion. Yeah, and that, that sort of brings in a, a, a larger perspective of the benefits of compost, and, and that is that um, by having organic material in soil, mm -hmm. you're, you're preventing um, soil erosion because the soil is able to absorb water more effectively. Right. So rather, you know, when you have a flood event or a heavy rain event, rather than that water just washing right off, compost helps that water helps be absorbed in. into the soil, um, sort of like a sponge. And on a large scale, that has huge implications in terms of our watershed health, right. um, especially when we're faced with, you know, in Lake Champlain, we've got phosphorus issues right. that, are, that are causing algal blooms and killing fish. Yeah. So, um, you know, Compost, so, if, if everyone had healthy soil right. that was chock full of compost mm -hmm. and absorbing all that water, it would, it would go a long way in terms of our watershed. Um, also, just the fact that, you know, by choosing to use compost rather than a chemical alternative, um, you're not only, mm -hmm. you know, improving your own health and the health of the food that you're growing, but you're also um, affecting what, com what does run off of your property. So right. if you're using um, chemical pesticides that you picked up at Home Depot and you get a, a major ra rain event, that stuff's just gonna wash right off right. into the watershed. And um, that is something yeah. I had absolutely no idea about. Yeah, it's gotta uh, go somewhere. <laughs> of, well, and just the idea that yeah. uh, compost can help to draw the water in as opposed to sliding off. Yeah. Um, that it makes the soil out of more. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if I had um, some soil here, I actually I wish I had brought some to show mm -hmm. you, you know, the difference between a really, a soil that's rich in organic material and mm -hmm. one that's not. Um, you'll, you'll find that compost or compost, that, a soil that has a lot of compost in it, is just got that really crumbly, dark right. look, and it's got a lot more pores and places right. for moisture to go, as opposed to sandy or clay soil, 
where it's um, very compact. It's right? either compact or the water is going to run right through it. Got it. So, um, yeah. So yeah, and, and when you think about that on a larger scale, you know, even in a, from a global perspective, right now, um, as a planet, I think about a third of all um, arable soil mm -hmm. in this planet has been heavily eroded. Yeah. And you know, as an as a country, I think right now. I've heard the statistic that about 28% of the, f the farmland that's in use right now is being eroded at a, a rate that's, that's not sustainable. That's not sustainable. Where it can't. So well, in all these big farming states where it's just the one crop that gets heavily fertilized and yeah. their soil is just you know, completely depleted, but right. these plants are growing on fertilizer, chemical fertilizer. So. Exactly. And you know, if I can wear my, my health coaching yeah. hat for a moment, this is where the idea for having a composting show came to mind mm -hmm. because uh, the the health of the planet, the health of the soil, is intimately tied with the health of the body. You know, we right. can't have a healthy body if our soils right. stop growing food. <laughs> right. You know, it's just if we can't, yeah. you know, pull the water into the soil. So yeah, it makes all the sense in the world. And um, you know, the other thing that we're that we're trying to really promote right now is to, to get people thinking about. Um, their lawns because mm -hmm. some people say well I don't have a garden or I don't I'm not a gardener but a lot of people have lawns right. and a lot of people are throwing all kinds of chemicals in to their lawns to make them grow yeah. green and look good and we're really trying to um, encourage people to top dress their lawns with compost because um, grass loves compost too and by doing that it's it's serving all those purposes of being able to you know keep water from running off mm. um, avoid having all those chemicals running into our watershed. Yeah. And um, in fact, some of the, the high schools in Chittenden County are sort of catching on to that now right. for their athletic fields. Yeah, so, and then you're rolling on the yeah. grass on, you know, your Well, think skin. about your kids. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're, ro you're rolling on the chemicals that yeah. you're adding to your grass. So when you say top dressing uh, a lawn, do you just spread? Uh, yep, there, there are a lot of different ways to do it. If you're talking about a small area, you can just sprinkle it on and, and rake it in. Mm -hmm. um, for larger areas, you can actually get a machine to do, to do the top dressing. Right. Um, a lot of people just, you know, spread it around and then and rake it in. But yeah. um, we're experimenting a little bit with some machines that actually do it and, and maybe in the future we might even offer it a service, as a service, you know, I don't know. Well, so. th that'll be great yeah. to see. <laughs> so yeah. there is new legislation passed in Vermont where in mm -hmm. a few years everybody needs to be composting. That's right. And so I know that I need to start learning about how to do this yeah. and how I'm going to do it in my condo, which is mm -hmm. another you know, kind of question that we're all going to face. Yeah. How are these uh, condominium associations going to uh, create the possibility for composting and what that's going to look like? So can we talk a little bit about how do I start composting in my little kitchen? Sure. <laughs> um, well, one of the things that, that the Chitten and Solid Waste District is very good at is outreach to businesses and residents and in, in helping people figure that out and mm -hmm. answer that question. Uh, we have a lot of free resources to help people do that. And the best place to start is to just, um, you know, maybe get on, get on our website and um, just look at some of the, the basic principles. It's really not rocket science. Mm -hmm. You just have to know a few things. Yeah, yeah. And then you can come into our facility and pick up our, one of our free buckets. So we have free countertop pails, and we also offer these free uh, four-gallon buckets that mm -hmm. you can use to, um, if you don't want to compost in your own backyard, you can bring it to one of our drop-off centers and dump it off there for free, and we'll and that'll come to our facility in Williston and gets turned into compost. So, okay. um, so you can choose. So you can either, for your, for your condo, for example, if your condo association doesn't um, currently allow uh, composting in the, in the yard somewhere, yeah. your, your best alternative is probably to use the drop-off service. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really easy. You just collect those food scraps every time you're cooking. Mm -hmm. You just take that stuff and put it in your bucket. And you can, for drop-off composting, include meat and bones and stuff like that. Oh, wow. We can compost all of that stuff at our facility on Redmond Road. Which you probably can't do in your garden. You your can't. Your backyard composting. Yeah, and the, and the difference is the, is the temperatures. With mm. the, the enormous piles that we have at Green Mountain Compost, we get temperatures that are between 130 and 160 sometimes degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. And that's enough to kill any pathogens that mm -hmm. may be in the soil. So. 
um, we even sometimes, you know, take in deer carcasses and stuff like that. And that stuff all just within days is just whew, gone. Wow. Yeah. So um, for the drop-off composting, which comes to Green Mountain Compost, you can include bones and meat and, um, you know, grease, all kinds mm -hmm. of stuff like that. Uh, whereas we don't recommend that for backyard composting. Okay. But once you collect that stuff, you just dump it into your four gallon bucket, which you might have outside or in the garage or something. And, and that then probably just, gets a little smelly. It does, and there's some things you can do to, to help. Mm -hmm. You know, you can put some, some newspaper at the bottom so that when you dump it, it all comes out and then you just rinse it out. Yeah. Um, and you, there's a lid for it. So, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do to sort of minimize the smell factor. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we recommend that people take the smaller container and put it in their freezer. So every time you need to use it, you just take it out and it's frozen oh, and you don't have you to just deal add with the smell. And put it yeah. back in the freezer. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, and if you spray it with some cooking oil first, mm -hmm. then it's really easy It'll to dump all out. Slip out. Mm -hmm. So Beautiful. there's little tips like that and you can yeah. find some of those on our website. Um, but yeah, so I would recommend that you go get the buckets. Mm -hmm. The buckets actually come with a th sticker that tells you exactly what you can and can't put in there, so it's really user-friendly. Mm -hmm. um, and then periodically, just drop by the closest drop-off center and, and drop so off. So I would imagine in places like Burlington that uh, City Market would be a drop-off center or no? It's not. Oh, okay. No. Yeah, so the drop-off centers are actually CSWD-run drop-off centers that are oh, of course. in Chittenden County. Of yeah. course. And, you know, I know that people beyond Chittenden County might be watching this, and there are other programs, solid waste district programs, that have their own stuff going on, and right. um, this is just specific to Chittenden County. There are County. other states that are a bit ahead of us in this Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Although we're way ahead of some other states. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. But you yeah. were even mentioning that some large cities like Seattle and Toronto, Toronto are yeah. already San have Francisco. composting programs. Oh yeah, there are some cities that are way ahead of us, and which is great. I mean, we can use them as a model um, for yeah. what, what can be. But the, um, so for condos, as, as, you know, as this catches on and pe more and more people start to, to compost, and, and um, we'll talk about Act 148 in, in mm -hmm. just a sec, but it's going to be required that, that everyone do it. So those condo owners or association owners, they're going to have to create ways for people to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and right. so that we'll see that changing. But for now, um, you know, you can use the drop-off drop -off centers. And for people who do own homes, they have the choice of, mm -hmm. um, you know, going out and buying a small uh, backyard composter, which we actually sell. Right. Um, for a really good price, or you can, you know, make your own bin very easily out of chicken wire and wood. Yeah. Um, or you can just create a pile if that's what you want to do. There's a lot of different ways to do it. So. Oh, cool. The key is like. The, you know, all of this this food that we throw out mm -hmm. all the time. It's a it's really a resource, and I just described you know the issues with soil erosion, how we're losing our soil mm -hmm. at alarming rates. And there's just no great reason why not to use it. I mean, it, it, there's no reason for it to go to a landfill where it ends up polluting the atmosphere with CO2 and other, you know, right. deadly gases. So. so this is bringing to mind uh, a question of a conversation that I've had with a friend several times. And honestly, I did, now I'm getting the answer. <laughs> um, uh, so we think you're, you're say, talking about food scraps as a resource that's going to waste mm -hmm. because it's ending up in a landfill. But so our curiosity is, doesn't some of that composting also happen in the landfill? And if we take the food mm -hmm. scraps out, are we now removing any sort of material that could potentially lead to the breaking down of some of the bad stuff that ends, like the plastics? And mm -hmm. so aren't we making the no <laughs> right? So tell us about what's the difference between right. taking food scraps mm -hmm. um, and putting them in a compost pile versus putting them in a landfill? I'm really glad you asked because I, I do get that question a lot from people and it, it makes sense. You know, you think, wow, well, here's a, you know, a tomato. What's the difference if I put it in the garbage and it decomposes in a landfill or it goes to something else? And the difference is that um, landfills are, are typically anaerobic environments, mm -hmm. which means that they're lacking oxygen. There's so much plastic and so much material that's just crammed in there. There's no opportunity for air to get in there. Yeah. Without air, things can't decompose because we talked about the microbes, how they right. need all that stuff. So what you end up with, with is um, organic material just breaking down really, really, really slowly. 
and when organic material breaks down slowly, it emits gases at a much higher level. So what you end up with is a lot more pollution coming mm. out of those landfills than you would have if you were actually just composting normally. Right. Um, composting produces gases as well, but at a very different rate um, and a very healthier level than yeah. this, the way that they're producing and a the land. Probably a different mix of gases and a different... Yeah, and I'm, right, not a, yeah. I'm not a scientist yeah. that way, and I don't know that much about that, but um, landfills are incredibly polluting, and yeah. we're also trucking this material. You know, from, from Chittenden County, we're trucking material to Coventry, which is in the Northeast Kingdom. That's the only <laughs> landfill that we have. So, we're, so every time I make dinner and I, I, throw, you know, I throw all my scraps into the garbage, I have to be thinking, like, all that is going to the okay. Northeast Kingdom, whereas it could be going into compost right. and it could be, you know, well, I, into soil. <laughs> um, I'm going to get my bucket. <laughs> I'm getting my bucket this week. I think when most people think about it, you know, when you finally realize that you can do that yes. and, and you realize how much it makes sense. Yeah. Well, I want to show yeah. your graphic uh, and talk a little bit about Act 148, 148. before yeah. we run out of time. Sure. But uh, the other thing that was shocking about, you showed me a picture that unfortunately we don't have to show mm -hmm. our viewers, but of uh, carrots that were in a landfill for 15 years, you said, yeah. and were almost intact. So yeah. in 15 years, they didn't actually decompose. Yeah, I have this great picture. It's, a, it's basically a bag of carrots that had been pulled out of a landfill after 15 years. And they're black on the outside, but when you but break them open, they're orange inside. So they, they, they're not yeah. decomposing anything or, you know. No. Yeah. So I want to show your graphic. Yeah. So you can tell us a little bit about this broader picture sure. of uh, Act 148, yeah. um, because we have a couple minutes. Great. Yeah, so Act 148 is Vermont's um, universal, universal mm -hmm. recycling law, which is a, a, a recently passed law that um, is going to, is mandating that um, food be used in a more um, appropriate manner and, and diverted away from landfills. Yeah. So if you look at the hierarchy, the, um, the, the, first, the first thing that we, we try to do is, is help businesses and people reduce the amount of waste that they're producing in the right. first place. After that, we look at how we can use food waste to actually feed people. So for mm -hmm. example, if you've got um, a bagel factory and you've got extra bagels, can we bring that to a food shelf? Got um, it. Or same with grocery stores. Um, next is, can we feed animals with that food? You know, like, pigs, chickens, pig, whatever exactly. it is. Exactly. And then we get to um, composting, anaerobic, and anaerobic digestion. So that's where that's really where our focus is, right there, um, is on that composting piece. But I just wanted to show that graphic to show that, you know, it's not just about um, composting. It's also about yeah. just reducing the amount of food waste that's going to the landfill in general, right. composting is just one piece of that. So first it goes to people, then to animals, and then to compost. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And first we, want to, first we want to try to reduce waste, period, you know, exactly. in, in terms of how much we're buying and how much we really need. Um, but this law is, it's a really positive thing. It's a statewide law, and um, it's already started to be implemented with the largest um, institutions first. So places like universities and hospitals are already yeah. being required to um, divert their food waste to either donation or a composting facility, as long as they have a composting facility that's in a reasonable distance. Are we out of time? I just want to show your your resource oh, before sure. your uh, contact information. We yeah. before we do run out of time. So um, the Green Mountain Compost uh, website is greenmountaincompost.com, mm -hmm. and so there's a lot of how-tos, I guess, on there. There are. There's a really, really good how-tos if you want to do backyard or drop-off composting. You can check that out. Perfect. Same with the CSWD.net. CSWD.net. And then more information on Act 148 mm -hmm. about universal recycling, you can find at N A N R State or anr.state.vt.us and probably find You can find it from there. From there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much. As yeah, you can no see, problem. we ran out of time because I had so many questions and yeah. it was just so fascinating. Thank but you. I am buying a bucket this week. It's my promise. I, 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 can't, I can't not do it anymore. All right. So I hope you learned as much as I did. Thank you so much for joining us and I will see you next time.